Wednesday, May the 20th. Uh, when I was getting ready to do my fishing report last week, it was raining and the lake was coming up and it was expected to come up quite a bit. So I, I actually didn't do a fishing report because I figured everything that I was talking about the previous week, it was all gonna be different, which it is. Uh, the lake's come up almost 10 feet since last Wednesday. Uh, right now, the lake level is at 925 and rising. Uh, water temperature is about the mid 60s. But, uh, you know, Bull Shoals is almost completely full. Uh, beaver is real full and they're dumping a lot of water out of Beaver. But right now, they're not letting hardly any out of Table Rock because Bull Shoals is so full. So the water's actually doing it, you know, it's backing up quite a bit. Uh, what's that? What that's done is where they had been running a lot of water, you know, the, there's no current pretty much out on the points. So that seems like it slowed down a lot of my bottom bite up there. But, you know, prior to the lake getting real, real crazy as far as high, uh, the Ned Rig was working really well down by the dam. And the swim bait was probably the most consistent. And the topwater bite was getting stronger and stronger. A lot of different baits we were throwing on top water. We were throwing uh, like poppers, like a pop R or a splash it, the Strike King, uh, a Zara Spook or a uh, Sexy Dog, you know, walking type baits and even uh, jointed red fins and wake shads. And a lot of these fish were, were kind of post spawn. They're back out over the deeper water. They're not deep, but they're just suspended out there. And there's several different ways to catch them. Now we've had some pretty good, you know, pretty good conditions as far as, you know, cloudy. Uh, some days you'll have big groups of fish that'll come up, you know, a lot of white bass, like uh, large mass Kentuckys and some small mouths mixed in. Other days there'll be, you know, one fish here and one fish there. And you gotta work a lot harder on that top water deal to catch them fish when they're just coming up in singles. You know, because a lot of times they're really not relating to the deeper trees, they're more relating to the bait. And that's another thing, the shad are actually, there's a little bit of shad spawn going on. And basically what, what happens when the shad start spawning is in the morning for the first couple hours, in the morning the shad are real active and they'll be up in the bushes, up around the boat docks, laying their eggs on hard surface structures like on the dock itself and on timber. So if you can get into an area where there's the shad spawns going on, and there are some fish in that area, there's, there's been a good topwater bite, but the same spots aren't working day to day. Now with that water coming up, you know, there's so many different things that are working. You know, one thing that's, that's working pretty good is like a fluke and a floating worm and a Cinco. And I'm just gonna show you a couple different ways that I rigged the floating worm up. You know, one way is I'm throwing it with a swivel Swivel is doing two different things. It's, it's giving you weight to cast it, but it's helping keep the twist out of the line. It also helps the bait sink. I usually use about a four rod hook on the worm, so it'll give it some weight and sink as well. Now, the bad thing about a swivel, if you throw an underhand, like right now where there's so much brush and trees in the water, if you're trying to skip the bait, these baits will really skip good if the swivel's not on here. You know, with the swivel on there, you can get like three or four skips going underneath stuff. But if you want to rig it without a swivel, a lot of times what I do, they make a little lead weight where I don't have to use the swivel for the weight and you can slide this up in the worm. Or if you're a carpenter, you got some finish nails around, use like a, a number four finish nail, stick it up inside the worm. That'll uh, allow you to get that bait underneath the brush, you know, the hanging tree limbs, uh, get way back into the cover. I mean, right now with the water being 10 feet high, there's tons of cover in the water. You know, it's almost getting to be where there's a little too much, too many places for the fish to hide. So what I'm looking for, it's a couple different banks I'm fishing. I'm fishing the flatter type banks where there's, there's still a few fish spawning. And I'm throwing, you know, the floating worm. This is a, a caffeine shad, or which is real similar to a fluke. I'm also throwing a fluke. Rigging it the same way, either with the swivel or without. And I'm trying to key on the flatter style banks 
areas that I think the fish are spawning. And I'm also going in the very backs of some of them spawning pockets where the waters come up. And you know, if you can find an area that doesn't have a million bushes or a million trees, I seem to have a little bit more confidence in those areas because I think there's a, a few less places for the fish to hide so I can key on what structure's there. Some of the banks are just so loaded with brush and trees, you know, that you, there's not a specific place to cast to. So basically I'm, I'm trying to look for stuff that's a little bit more isolated. Uh, sometimes I have to go towards like people's backyards or in the very backs of the pockets to find that. And you know, like I say, since the waters come up and the current has slowed down, my Ned Rig bite has really slowed down. But uh, you know, a lot of the fish are suspending, and I don't know if some of them, the, the Ned Rig fish were eight to 10 feet deep. So with the lake coming up 10, I don't know if they're down, still down there in that 20 foot. I've tried it out there a little bit. I've tried it with some, uh, like a wobble head jig, a three quarter ounce football jig. But my bottom bite is very inconsistent, you know, whether it's shallow or deep. So I've been keying on a lot of these fish that are roaming around in the bushes. And the, some of the fish are coming up right with the water. If you like to flip, you know, you can get up into the thick brush and flip a jig or like a Texas rig uh, brush hog or, you know, one of my favorite baits is a, a structure bug, which is a, a beaver style bait. And I'll usually use a quarter ounce, or five sixteenths weight and peg it. But I can, you know, get this right through the thickest of the brush. Now the areas that I'm finding I'm doing a little better with this is I'm looking for the, uh, more in the 45 degree banks. They've got uh, steeper banks, chunkier rock. And it seems like the last couple hundred yards in the backs of the creeks or the back of the pocket seems to be you know where i'm finding the fish the best and it's kind of the same thing as i was just talking i'm looking for if i can find areas that uh, the cover is a little bit more isolated then i'll sit there and pick that cover apart and the colors i'm using you know i'm pretty much the water for the most part throughout the lake is still in real good shape uh, most of the water i've been fishing i've been fishing the mid james uh in the white river and you know it's still got you know four or five foot of visibility now some of the river arms i live up here by cape fair and the water's pretty brown up here and there's quite a bit of debris now i would just match your bait color to the water color if you start getting into some real muddy water you know i'd go black and blue and on the floating worm you know you can use like an, an ocho or a cinco well, the fluke, there's, there's a lot of different baits, you know, you can rig on that same scenario. Uh, but, you know, on the flipping bite, I'm just kind of mixing it up between a, a 3 8 and a half ounce jig and that beaver style bait. Uh, a lot of times on them flats, if there's, you know, isolated willows, it, and I keep saying isolated, there's not much of anything isolated because there's much, so much water in the lake. But if I, if I can find something that's further out on a point, I'll... I'll try that before I go back into pockets, but consistently they've been more towards the backs of the pockets. And uh, the fish on them steeper banks more apt to be largemouths. The stuff out on the flats have been uh, Kentuckys and smallmouths. Now another thing to pitch around all that brush, uh, besides a floating worm, is a wacky rig Cinco. You know I'm using a, uh, you can either use an Ocho, uh, a Yamamoto Senko, uh, a lot of different baits you can use. So when I put a little O-ring on it, I get more out of my bait that way. And I'm using a 16th ounce Ultimate Ned Jig Head on it. The reason I'm using that is I throw it with a bait caster with, you know, 15, 17 pound line in that heavy brush. Uh, a lot of times if you just rig it up with a hook and no weight, it's real hard to pitch or cast on a bait cast. It seems like you gotta go, gotta go to a spinning gear. And some of that brush is so thick. Sorry. God bless you. <laughs> some of that brush is so thick, I'm wanting something with some pretty heavy line. Like on my bait casters, the beaver and the jigs that I'm flipping, I'm flipping like, you know, 15 to 20 pound line. So if I get hooked up with a good fish, you know, I can get them out of the cover. 
like I say, I have not been fishing the dirty water. I've been staying in the, in the fairly clear water. But if you get up in that dirty water, uh, you might try a chatterbait uh, or even a spinnerbait. You know, we've had a lot of cloudy days uh, with wind. But, uh, you know, with this water coming up, the, the fish are really scattering with it. If you're uh, out on the flats, out there where the water's pretty clear, underspins still working for me some. I'm throwing a quarter ounce. We caught a couple fish on this today. Quarter ounce on the spin. Like I say, there's probably, I'm seeing more fish up suspended than I am on the bottom. So the swim baits and suspending baits are working a little bit better for me once I figure out how deep they are. Another bait that I can find it here is a, a scrounger that's been working real well too. This is, I'll either throw a three eighths or a half ounce and I really like the one that uh, Lucky Strike makes. The reason I like the one that they make, some of the other ones I've tried, if you reel the bait too fast, the bait rolls and then puts major twist in your line. But I've had real good luck with this uh, new version that Lucky Strike makes. And normally when I'm throwing a scrounger head, I don't use a swim bait, you know, with a paddle tail because the head is got, itself has got so much action, I feel that having a paddle tail on the back, I don't get the right action. So if I'm throwing just a single swim bait, uh, not a single, but I mean on a regular swim bait head, I will use a paddle tail. Uh, oh, I thought I had one. I thought I had one sitting here. But I'll use a like a 3.8 paddle tail, but on the scrounger head, I like a fluke style bait. And this is, a, you know, like again, it's a caffeine shad, but I've been using a, a super fluke as well. And on, a lot of times when, with my Garmin electronics, I'm trying to find out how deep the fish are. I'll count the bait down and swim the bait through it. You know, a lot of the shad are out there. You'll be running, you know, fish in the bank and scanning out to the deeper water. And I'll see a big school of shad out there behind me in 30, 35 feet of water. A lot of times I can take and cast the underspin a small swim bait or a scrounger out around them shad and you know catch fish out of them in the open water. So it's kind of a mixed bag. It's almost like whatever you like to do, you can do right now. I mean, there's really clear water in the lake and there will be for a while. With them not generating any water, the dirty water that's come in from the rivers really isn't moving down lake very fast because they're dumping so much water out of beaver it's kind of holding the color pretty much where it is in the river. But once they start generating water, letting water out of Table Rock, that stained water like in the James and the Kings, uh, Long Creek is going to start flowing down towards the rest of the lake and giving that some stain as well. But, uh, you know, there's a variety of ways to catch fish out there. And I haven't found the lake to be dangerous at all. You just got to be careful because naturally when the lake comes up 10 feet, a lot of debris that was resting on in the woods and on the shoreline comes out and floats around. So you just got to be careful of that. Uh, I haven't run into any big long jams, you know, a few big trees here or there, but you just got to keep your eye out, be cautious, and uh, be safe out there. So till next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.